Good morning all, welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Stand and sing our first hymn. and welcome to St John's on this beautiful autumn break. Lots of rain, lots of smiley farmers. Um, For those who are visiting with us, our worship commences on page 119 of the prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Christ is risen, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, The Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. For the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts today and always be acceptable to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Sheep have a long history in this country, don't they? They came out with the first fleet and have been here ever since. Or at least their wool and meat have been important to the country and it has been said that Australia grew on the back of a sheep. People who look after the sheep were shepherds even back at the beginning of colonial times and therefore played an important part in the development of this country. It was only in the early days of European settlement, however, that shepherds stayed overnight with their flocks, just as they did in the times of Jesus. With the establishment of the large sheep stations, sheep were kept in fenced off paddocks and were not known individually by their station owner, who only knew them by the brand he had burnt into their hide. They were moved from paddock to paddock according to the amount of grass and water available. And that's still the way it is, isn't it? You know, we drive down the highways or the byways and we see great flocks of sheep They're in one paddock today and they're in another one tomorrow. But in the time when David wrote this psalm, Psalm 23, it did so from the experience of a shepherd in his, as a task as a young man, as he looked after his father's sheep. Now in the days of David, shepherds would have about a hundred sheep to look after. And that's how they got to know them by name. This required David to ward off the danger from wild animals who would attack either himself or the sheep. That's why they had that big crook. It was usually a rather heavy piece of wood. Also, as a shepherd, it was his task to ensure that the sheep had food and water, as well as a place of safety at night. Through this experience and his life as King David, he learnt that the Lord was his shepherd. He saw in the way that God looked after him that God was his shepherd, that he provided for him. He provided the needs, his needs daily and he kept him safe from his enemies. Often David went into battle with only half the number of men he needed or a lesser number than the enemy that were attacking. Yet they won the day because he trusted in his shepherd just as the sheep who would get to know their shepherd trusted him to lead them. 
He also realised that God was his daily companion and that if he put his faith in God, he would never be in want. He would never be alone and he would live in the house of the Lord forever. Both in this earthly life and in the one to come. Jesus in the gospel uses the example of a shepherd because he knew the people around him would understand what he was talking about. It was a rural society. They had lots of flocks around. And that he was the good shepherd. So when he called himself the good shepherd, people would also understand. And he was one that would look after his sheep, his people, those that followed him those that have followed him over the centuries and even in today. Now, over the centuries, there have been many excellent shepherds, prophets and kings, as well as some fairly bad ones. And if you want to find out about them, read Kings 1 and 2, as light reading at night. Because they wanted to harm his people. And we can see where these bad shepherds led the people of Israel astray. The pen referred to in verses 1 to 6 was drawn from the picture of the the current practice of the day where sheep at night were gathered together in an enclosed area, usually with walls of about six foot tall. But they could contain many flocks of a night, so they were all brought in, showing that the world is... A pen. And we have many different groups of people in the world, don't we? And these pens were designed to keep predators, both the four and the two legged varieties, out. And it only had one gate. Thus, in the setting of the sheep pen, the passage invites us to look at three images. Firstly, the gate, yes, the shepherd, and then the sheep themselves. So, in the first part of the picture, Jesus is not the gatekeeper but he is the shepherd that leads the sheep to the pen. He has the authority to call his own sheep from the pen for he is their rightful leader. And the sheep pen is said to represent Israel from which Jesus calls his followers. Yet with Jesus the picture is larger than this and the pen from which Jesus calls his flock is the wider world. Then Jesus switches the image to the gate through which the sheep enter. Now, so now, not only is he the shepherd who looks after his sheep, he is the gate also that allows them in and keeps them safe from intruders. For those who enter without permission are robbers and thieves and are not to be trusted. And we know that the church as a whole, the body of Christ, at times is affected by people who are not Jesus' followers. They come in under false pretense. These robbers can be seen to represent false teachers of scripture or things of the world that draw people away from being in God's flock. The third point to Jesus' parable is that seeing Jesus is the gate for the sheep also, only those sheep who find him will enter the sheepfold and find safety, for they alone will hear his voice. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if we want to be in the pen of God's kingdom, and that's the pen Jesus is referring to, we can only get there through belief and faith in Jesus and following what he calls us to do. These sheep that hear his voice and obey him will enter into his fold. This kingdom here on earth and in heaven and find peace and stability. The world is a dangerous place with many pitfalls and predators. But it's the good shepherd that will lead us to green pasture and protect us. Jesus is also pointing out that those called to be caretakers, sub-shepherds if you want, 
of his flock have in many cases failed to do so. As we see the failure of leaders both in the past and current times in the church to acknowledge the work of God in Christ, which puts into question the legitimacy of their leadership. And here Jesus is having a go at the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests of his day because he was saying they had failed to teach the people and keep them safe. But that also extends to church leaders today. And already in the news there's another church leader who's facing criminal action or questions about his leadership. The story in John is really an allegory for the flock of Christ, which is the church, and is led by the good shepherd Jesus. Plus it is a warning to those Jesus has called to look after the flock in his absence, to follow his example as well as to affirm or affirmation of the task. And that's those that Jesus calls to be ministers in his church. Whether they're lay ministers or clergy ordained, leaders have a responsibility to lead the people placed under their care in the ways of Jesus. Because we will be held account if we fail to do so, more so than others. Jesus continues to tell us about himself and yet now he is warning us about the detractors who endanger the flock of God and points out the merits of all other leaders must be measured against Jesus' leadership. Jesus calls his flock from the sheep pen of the world system into the sheepfold of God's system. The fold, as I said, that is the kingdom of God. Also, what this story is telling is that the world is a tough place. It is like a desert, arid and dry, and is a home to wild beasts, a place of moral traps, and if we face this desert alone, we could wander off and perish spiritually. This is something many here may have already experienced in their life journey. I know that I have, and it was a scary place to be. However, Jesus is there as our shepherd, and he knows each one of us by name, for we are his, and he has called us into his kingdom. Those who have heard him, and he stands at the gate to protect us. But he also leads us out of the pen of the world, and he will guide and lead us through the desert of life to good pasture. He is our shepherd and will provide for us. And if we do tend to wander off, he will come and look for us. Just as in that parable of the lost sheep, the shepherd goes to find the one that is lost. Our shepherd is skilled and courageous, and if we are under his leadership, and if we continue to recognise his voice, not yielding to the temptation and enticements of the false shepherds, then we'll find safety and flourish in our faith. So which shepherd do you follow? The shepherd of the world's ways, Satan, or the true shepherd, Jesus. Jesus is calling still. You have not responded to his voice. Now would be a good time to do so. And if you've turned him out of your life or tuned him out of your life or turned down the volume, now would be a good time to reconnect with Jesus. For to delay may be dangerous and you could find yourself outside of the pen which is the kingdom of God. We only have Jesus as our shepherd through the grace of God and his love for his people, all of them, regardless of colour or creed. And Jesus, good, the good shepherd, is calling his people into his fold to find peace in his kingdom. And if you are still on the outside, come on in. For he is also calling you into the fold and to look after a flock that he has for you to care for. I example your family, your workplace, your home group, and so on. So that they too may come into God's kingdom and find peace and safety. 
There are many chances to be in the fold and a good shepherd, as modelled by Jesus, continues to call us in. So I pray today that you are listening to the voice of the good shepherd, Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with each one of you today and every day that God should grant you. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our final...